much for joining us during this momentary distraction of simple amusements and magic. Welcome to Faust and Company, everyone, on this Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. I see that we already have a couple viewers out there, so thank you so much. If you're out there, please say hi. I can see that Micah is out there. Nick, thank you so much. It's my time to plug you guys into the show notes, so thank you for coming, guys. And so we have a very special guest today, and his name is Jonas Cain. But before we get to Jonas... I would like to make a couple of announcements. I see that Darren is out there. Hello, Darren. It's always nice to see friends out there. So I, I just want to say thank you once again. But everyone, I have a couple of announcements before we get on with the magic and start your weekend off right. And so this Valentine's, I am going to be appearing with a very stellar cast from the nation's capital, and they are called Washington Magic. So this is the advertisement. So please check us out, and you can find the information at WashingtonMagic.com, and it is produced by David Mori and Savino Racine, and there is a stellar cast that I hope that you can check out. So uh, please, please check that out if, if you're available and free and, and if you're not doing anything for Valentine's. And so what I wanted to do today before we get to our special guest, I wanted to share some music donated by Drew Nugent and the Midnight Society, our official band here. They came out with a new album and this song in particular was um, made in the 1930s and I hope you enjoy, and I hope that it sets the tone for the weekend to come. So ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy Drew Nugent and the Midnight Society with a 1930s song called Confessin'. This song was written in 1930 by Chris Smith and Al Nieberg. It's entitled Confessin'. <laughs> I'm confessing that I love you Tell me, do you love me too? I'm confessing that I need you Honest I do, honest I do Need you every moment in your eyes I read such strange things 
Boys, your lips deny that true. Oh, when your answer really changed things, making me blue, making me blue. I'm afraid someday you'll leave me. Say, can we still be friends? If you do, you know you'll grieve me. Cause all in life, what you seem to depend. Am I guessing that you love me? Or am I dreaming my dreams in vain? In vain. I'm confessing that I love you over again. Yeah. I'm digging the tunes too, Braden. I mean, I hope that everyone out there enjoyed Drew Nugent and the Midnight Society. And if you're wondering where you could find them, you can check this out. You can find them here. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the time where we meet our featured guest, and I'm quite excited about introducing you to him. He is a good friend of mine. I met him at Las Vegas at the Magic and Meaning Conference several years ago, and needless to say, it is just an exciting time for me to have him finally on here. He's an author, a speaker, and a magician, and he is the creator and founder of Hashtag Positivity. And, and I hope that you enjoy his spellbinding positive magic. He's performed all over the world for different celebrities alike. So please, I welcome Jonas Kane. <laughs>
Jonas, welcome to Faust and Company, my friend. It is a joy to be here, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> You're always welcome here, and your positivity is all already emanating through the screen. I can see that you have many fans out there, and they are commenting, and I probably can't keep up. Edward says hello. Oh, Edward, I love Edward. Hello. Oh, oh, my goodness, so many people. Hello. Scott is here, too, and, and they are all watching you, Jonas. So thank you so much for blessing this, this, uh, um, this time and place at Faust & Company. It's such a joy. I, I'm absolutely thrilled. I, I met you a few years ago, and uh, you know, I, 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 you know, throughout this time, I haven't had had a chance to see you in the past year or so. So I'm thrilled to have this opportunity to see you virtually. Right. You know, Jonas. I, I, I know we were talking prior. I met you at the Magic and Meaning Conference, my first time there in Las Vegas, and it's a conference held by Jeff McBride, and you did a lecture. You did a lecture, and needless to say, I didn't know what to expect, and you you definitely had inspiring and compelling positive magic then. And, you know, the one thing that I do remember is how I felt, and I really felt inspired through that. And that was our first meeting, for those of you wondering out there. <laughs> Yeah, I forget which which talk I gave that year. I I, I gave three talks, and I and each talk was very specific, uh, because in my work as a positivity magician, a purveyor of positivity and facilitator of fascination, there are three core messages that I deliver. So each year, I was I gave a talk on on one of each of those those topics. I I think perhaps that was the year I talked about. Building, building magic connections, perhaps about the value of relationships. That 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 may have been the one that you saw. Yes, it it, it does strike some familiarity. But needless to say, you know, I talked to you after, and it was just really nice to get your take on magic and how you presented it. You know, I have so many questions for you as far as your style of magic. I know that you you're the founder of hashtag positivity. Could you explain a little bit about what that is and and what you do with hashtag positivity? I'd be happy to. Uh, in fact, it's actually it's a it's a common thought that I I'm the founder. I'm actually the current owner, the original founder. And this is this is a a little known fact is a very good friend of mine. This was six years ago. He started this, at the time it was just an idea. It was a movement where he wanted to spread positivity into the community. His name is Jason Dimitropoulos. And uh, it started because he was working in a firehouse as a fireman. Yeah. And uh, if you've ever watched any of the firefighter TV shows that are on TV, I mean, that's an exaggeration, but it's based off of truth. You know, they can they can kind of get into each other's hairs, fooling around. It's all in love, but sometimes things can go too far. And when things would go too far, they would say, hashtag positivity to sort of reset the mood in the room. Right, right. So based off that, Jason thought, well, maybe there's something there. So that's when he decided to uh, start. Uh, he came up, oh, let's see, where is it? Here it is. With the logo, <laughs> he designed the, the logo, hashtag positivity. Yes. And, uh, and from there, it just it just blossomed. And he started printing them up on T-shirts and hats just to get wow. them out to the community. Right. So at first, it was just a clothing company. Uh, but it was uh, he was just like giving the stuff away practically. <laughs> and now it's become a message. And I think it, it, it definitely it resonates. Hashtag positivity is 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 somewhat of a language now, especially for this generation. I mean, it, it's so familiar and easy to remember, and it 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 speaks of you know volumes as far as especially during the time that we are in now. Positivity is so important to us, you know, Jonas. If I if there was someone who didn't know or have hasn't seen your magic as of current, how would you describe your magic to people? I would describe my magic probably using a magic trick. <laughs> you know, it's the idea of show, don't tell, right? Uh, so 
I've had sort of a love hate relationship with magic over the years. And uh, it was because, uh, you know, you know, life experiences can oftentimes get in, 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 in the way of things. And uh, as I was sort of coming to, to understand uh, where my place in, 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 in magic was, I tried to get out of it for a little while. Yes. But then it just kept pulling me back. And what I've come to really embrace is that what I most love about magic is it reminds us life is filled with surprises. But Chris... That's not the whole story, but not in the sense of something missing, but in the sense of being complete. So not because there's something missing from our lives, but because it is a part of the whole of our lives. Therefore, it is the whole. And when we confuse this very subtle difference, life surprises can get us so turned around, it can put us on the spot. <clears throat> pun intended. <laughs> now, as you know, Chris, some people see life surprises as problems to be ignored. Others see them as opportunities to be explored. And since this is more of an interview than a magic show, this is the perfect time to explore this. So Chris, let's take a closer look. This spot is made by taking a hole and placing it in front of a hole. Makes sense, yes? Yes, yes, absolutely. This spot, though, is different. Because if you look closely, I'll bring it up, up very close, you can see that there's no hole there at all. And this is where you say, surprise. <laughs> 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 and when we embrace these surprises, that's when opportunities can pop up everywhere. <laughs> oh, bravo. Even in the most unlikely of places, helping us to grow to whole new heights. That's where we say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and when we do this, that's when that, my friends, is the whole story. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> wonderful, Jonas, wonderful. Whole story. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I think me and you, we have the same um, teacher, nonetheless, and, and that's how we met. And, you know, obviously there everyone out there. I just have to point out that everyone is just chiming in on the comments. So a job well done. Micah says bravo. Well, love that. Thank you. Thank you, Micah. But thank I, you, Braden. Hello, Braden. Good to see you. <laughs> yes. You, and you performed. Actually, you spoke at Jeff McBride's Mystery School Monday with Braden, and you um, you were just featured for your particular magic. And I wanted to mention, uh, Jonas, that we we have the same teacher, Jeff McBride. And what I love about you know your magic is is that you're not just showing a trick; you are sending a message. And is that what? you um, specialize in or is that what you present to um, in your magic show is magic with meaning essentially and very much so it it goes back to my my first time meeting jeff mcbride was uh, oh my goodness it was over a decade ago when i when i attended mystery school for the first time and there was there was one thing that i really took away from that meeting from from that course and it was that everything we do tells a story. But the question is, are we aware of what that story is? Are we conscious of it or is it just happening by default? And interestingly, I walked away from that and that is sort of what inspired me to consider getting out of magic yes. because I became so passionate about communicating a very specific message. Yeah. And I thought, well, do I really need the magic to communicate this? Well, of course, the answer is no. We don't need. It's like you know, uh, you know, it's it's it's. But it's a choice. I don't need it. However, the magic is such a a part of me. It's a part of of my skill set. It's part. It's a part of uh, my expertise. It's a part of my authenticity. So it would be silly uh, not to incorporate it would be silly for picasso not to use paint let's just put it that way yeah. <laughs> you right. know right. uh and that's also why i bring in music into my presentations as well 
I'm also a trained musician. I studied music. My main instrument is the saxophone. However, that's kind of loud over Zoom. So <laughs> I started playing the uh, the ukulele instead. Uh, so that's part of my authenticity. So yeah. it's not, you know, a, a painting is not about the paint. A sculpture isn't about the stone or the wood. A book isn't about the words, but it's about what are we trying to communicate? So absolutely, the magic isn't about the magic. And, and you actually, you, right at the top of the show, you, you said it best, you know, you, you remembered how it made you feel. Yeah. It's a feeling, it's an experience. And that's really what we're going for. Jonas, I have to ask you, and it is a very, you know, classical question is this, when did you actually fall in love with magic? Cause I can see mm -hmm. that it is a passion for you. So it had to start somewhere. And I'm curious, when did that all start? It started when I was just a young boy, as as it happens with with many folks who who get into into magic. For me, I was such a shy child. I really had a hard time communicating with the world. Uh, I was just I was very timid. I would barely speak. In fact, when I did speak yeah. to other people, I had such a severe stutter that I couldn't get get words out. It was it was very difficult for me to to do anything. Uh, uh, with people. So when I saw magic for the first time, and it was between seeing magicians on TV or seeing a magician at like my, my, my father's company picnic, I, I would see magic. I really latched on to it because uh, here I was this, this shy kid who, who was having trouble doing what people are supposed to be able, be able to the very very basic things of of communicating, and yet here were these people doing what no one is supposed to even be able to do, doing making the impossible become possible. I really latched on to that. That became something that was very empowering for me to experience, and I decided I wanted to be able to do that too. Right. And, and when I started learning magic, and this was really the first magic trick, when I started learning magic. In order to do magic, you need an audience. You need someone to engage in. You know, otherwise, it's it, you know you're just playing around, right? right? So that is having something special to share with other people. That's what gave me the confidence to step up in front of other people and work through whatever challenges I had in in communication. And to this day, when I get really excited, I still stammer over my, my words a little bit, but oh my goodness, it's, I'm able to get sentences out. Whereas I couldn't even do that when I was like five or six. Well, needless to say, if you hadn't mentioned that story, I wouldn't have known at all. And you are a wonderful speaker, by the way, when I seen you, that was the one thing that I, you know, was impressed upon was the way you presented yourself and the way you connected with your words. And obviously, you, whatever obstacles you've uh, come across thus far, you, you seemingly overcame them. So bravo to you, Jonas. Thank you, Chris. If you have a minute, I think Braden has a question. Oh, which, absolutely. Which is something that we're doing here at Faust and Company. So if, if there are questions within our time, he has a question. What has been a memorable moment for you during performance? Hmm. Do any during, of you stick out? I immediately went to three experiences in my mind, and each one were, were oh, it's my uncle. Hello, hello, Uncle Charlie. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> uh, so there were there were three experiences. One of them was when I had a near death experience on stage. Oh, wow where I was, do, I was, it was one of the rare moments I was performing a piece of, of, of danger magic, which I don't recommend anyone doing. I was 13 years old and I was at my high school talent show and I was doing a version of Russian roulette using acid. Oh boy. So instead of, of, you know, so I had five test tubes all filled with water, except for one had hydrochloric acid. They were all mixed up and I was blindfolded and I was supposed to drink from all of them, except for the, for, for the one that had acid. But, you know, thir enter 13 year old Jonas, who's still an emerging performer and uh, doesn't really know what he's right. doing still. The very first test tube I drank 
had the acid. Oh my gosh. I <laughs> I tore my blindfold off. I, I spit it out immediately. I ran off stage. I had water off stage. So I'm gurgling with the water, swishing it around, trying to get the acid neutralized out of my, my mouth. And in, in meanwhile, I have a lapel microphone on and I'm running oh, around God. the school <laughs> saying, get my parents. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Because, of course, my parents were in the audience at this point freaking out. And, uh, oh, my goodness. So I, I was rushed to the no, – oh, and, and here's an important part. No one in the audience, except for, of course, my, my parents, everyone, they thought it was part of the act. Yes. They just thought, oh, this is a comedy act. <laughs> so everyone was just laughing hysterically. Meanwhile, I'm, like, trying to get – like, no, I'm serious. I need to go to the, 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 the hospital here. So – as we're going to the hospital, my mom is, is, is racing me to the hospital. Meanwhile, I'm hanging out the window, still s sipping water, you know, spewing it out because I'm I trying to get the acid out. And even in this crazy moment, I had the presence of mind. <laughs> I still laugh about this. I turned to my mother and I said, we must never speak of this. <laughs> <laughs> I was already embarrassed for my future self. <laughs> right. And and now we're speaking on it on live stream on Facebook nonetheless. So it's hilarious <laughs> now. <laughs> what a what a great story, Jonas. You know, I obviously I can I can talk to you all day and sharing these stories of your personal life and also what you do in magic. We appreciate that here. And I hope that everyone out there is enjoying your stories. I know I am. And that is a story I will always remember because it is dangerous. And it's good to see that nothing serious came of it. And so I'm happy about that. You know, it, it was it was a close call. I was on a feeding tube for for over a month. I couldn't swallow anything. It was oh, really a, it was a serious issue. Yeah, I, that's serious. But fortunately, you're okay and still performing magic. <laughs> yes, just not that. <laughs> <laughs> not ever again. Jonas, I wanted to go over uh, some of your, your projects because our time is running out. So I want to make sure that we, we highlight a couple things. I know that you have a website and it is hashtag positivity. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, so on that that website, there's a slew of free resources between articles and blogs and videos, a podcast, a slew of resources that can help you to really think, be, and stay positive. I, I wrote a book recently called Are You Positive? Rethinking Positive Thinking. And uh, as a way to communicate eight principles and practices for thinking, being, and staying positive. And these, the subtitle, Rethinking. <laughs> positive thinking, uh, because I'm not sure if you've seen it in the news or not, but you know, there's been this huge re resurgence of people um, uh, talking about toxic positivity, which is a real thing. Uh, right. uh, so that book and everything on the website, it's addressing real and genuine and serious positivity, which takes work. It takes what I call the three pillars of positivity, positive growth mindset, clarity of purpose, high value relationships. That's, that takes work. It takes a lot of work to think, yeah. be, and stay positive in those realms. So I have a slew of, of resources on the website that, that your, your listeners can uh, take advantage of. So if anyone's out there, please look up Jonas Kane at hashtag positivity. If you're interested in his, his work, as far as writings and resources, you also mentioned Jonas that you have a podcast. Where can we find that if we wanted to listen in? So there is a link on the website. Uh, however, the specific, uh, it's on a positive note, on a positive note.com. You can okay. check out the, uh, the, the podcast there. On a positive note.com. And then, uh, and finally, you are on Facebook and it's under Jonas Kane, and you are also on Instagram. And Absolutely. so anyone out there interested in finding our friend Jonas Kane, please look him up. And, and if you were just tuning in, you can rewatch the whole show so you can follow all the, 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 the media that he's on there. Jonas, I can talk to you all day. And 
you know, I always ask our featured guests to leave the audience with a positive thought or anything. And I know that you are an expert at that. But I would like, if you can, to close out our show with just a message to our audience, if, if you may. Absolutely. We can end literally on a positive note. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I, and I, I, I do have a specific message in mind. One of the most common questions that I get asked as a positivity coach and speaker is, how do we stay positive when dealing with negative circumstances? And this is truly a fair question to ask because when life's challenges get in our way, when they threaten to hold us back from moving forward to where we most want to be, how are we supposed to stay positive? This can be even more challenging when our circumstances are narrow, meaning there's very little wiggle room. So our peace, our joy, and our happiness becomes so tied to just one outcome that when challenges get in our way, all of a sudden we find ourselves in a situation where we're stuck. How are we supposed to stay positive when life's challenges are literally stacked against us? One of my favorite practices for this comes to us from the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks. And he said, I'll do my best Tom Hanks impersonation. He said, I've got to keep breathing because tomorrow the sun will rise. Who knows what the tide might bring? <sighs> Breathing, just <sighs> breathe. This does two very important things. Number one, it literally keeps us alive. It can take us from a moment of potential crisis to the moments afterwards. However, what it also does is it turns on what's called our parasympathetic nervous system. This is our body's natural response that calms us down. And our body does this naturally on its own. However, when we find ourselves in stressful situations and we feel our anxiety and tension and stress rising, that we can kick it in naturally on our own in a number of ways, including breathing, really filling the lungs. That's the important part. Really fill those lungs and then breathe out because it's when the lungs return to their resting state that it kicks in our parasympathetic nerves. So, and this is our encouraging news. The next time you find yourself in a situation that's less than positive, just remember to breathe. Just keep breathing. You never know what the tide might bring in. Thank you so much, Chris, for letting me share that with your listeners. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonas Kane, and a reminder to keep breathing. Jonas, thank you so much for visiting us here at Faust and Company. And, and we hope that you will come back and visit us again. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Heron as Faust. This is Jonas Kane, and we thank you all for coming, and we hope to see you again soon. Take care, everyone. <laughs>